guys, welcome back to another episode of I'm Bald with Elliot. Today we're just going to be reacting to some SCP stuff from the SCP Explained. So let's get into it. You're driving down a long highway lost in an area you don't know too well, trying to find the right turn that'll have you heading back towards your home. You keep okay. driving. The nighttime quiet all around you. Deciding to try and break that silence, you reach for the radio, turning the dial to filter through all the garbled, distorted voices and songs from nearby local radio stations that are too far out of range to come through clearly. You try your best to listen to the music from one radio station, but eventually the sound of the static only makes you wish for the silence you were trying to break. Your fingers nudge the tuning dial on your car radio once again, and finally, something comes through. It isn't loud or clear, but under the distortion, you can make out the sound, and it isn't a song or even a late news broadcast. The first thing you hear sounds like a short musical tone, only for about 10 seconds. Next, a young girl's voice speaking in a language you don't understand, even through the distorted audio. From her accent, you assume it's Russian, but you still have no idea what the words she's saying mean. With nothing else to listen to, you let the broadcast play. Still driving alone in the dark with nothing but the strange adolescent voice to accompany you, your mind begins to wander. She sounds like she's speaking something, but the rhythm of the words is somehow familiar to you, even though you don't speak Russian. Then it hits you. She's counting. But you don't feel smart for having worked that out. Instead, something about knowing that makes your blood run cold. You carry on driving through the night. After a few short minutes, the Russian girl stops counting, and the musical tone plays again under the distortion, leaving you alone in the car once again, with nothing but your thoughts and questions of what exactly you just heard. Thankfully, we have the answer. What you heard was SCP-3034. Since 1964, this same broadcast has been made a vast number of times. 627 times, in fact. You'd have to be within two kilometers of the broadcast's point of origin to hear it, where Foundation personnel have tried and failed numerous times to triangulate its source. The numbers heard recited in the SCP-3034 broadcast are actually a countdown from 200, read aloud in Russian. Star on Disney Plus is now streaming. Get it on us for six months and access more. All Foundation staff are able to do while stationed at the nearby provisional site 3034 is scour radio frequencies for occurrences of SCP-3034. Checking their equipment is properly maintained and calibrated before they are eventually rotated off-site and replaced with a new group of staff. There is only one rule that any Foundation members working at Provisional Site 3034 must follow. They are only permitted to send one radio transmission with their equipment, a single phrase in reply to the SCP-3034 broadcast, Vizio Harashu, receiving this. The countdown stops and the broadcast ends, but never permanently. SCP-3034 has been known to repeatedly occur, seemingly at random. The shortest recorded gap between broadcasts was two weeks, while the longest so far lasted six whole months. You may have heard the term number station mentioned before, but these are far from just random numerical sequences sent out over the airwaves without purpose. General speculation surrounding number stations points to them being the tools of espionage agents, a way of sending coded, highly sensitive messages or information without the risk of compromising their cover. The use of number station transmissions is often attributed to spies working on foreign soil, who utilize shortwave radio frequencies, speech synthesis, Morse code, and either regular or sporadic timing schedules. While it's true that times have changed and technology has progressed considerably, there appears to be evidence that number stations are still used among various intelligence and espionage agencies today. Despite being considered an old-fashioned method of communication, these low-tech shortwave stations remain a viable, reliable option for the transmission and reception of intelligence to field agents. The Conet Project is a comprehensive archive of this phenomenon and its founder, Aiken Fernandez, has long been fascinated by number stations. According to him, 
This system is completely secure because the messages can't be tracked. The recipient could be anywhere. You just send spies to the country and get them to buy a radio. They know where to tune and when. So what does the distorted broadcast of numbers from SCP-3034 mean? Is it the work of covert agents? And if so, whose side are they on? Most importantly, why does the SCP Foundation make certain there are always three of its personnel on site, ready to send the all is well message whenever SCP-3034 begins broadcasting? your team connected, whether they're working from home, in the office. Broadcasting. SCP-3034 was first discovered by the Foundation in 1964, after a defector from the Soviet GRUP, a division tasked with acquiring and studying anomalies on behalf of the USSR, gave them a tip. Commander Robert Malthus, along with a team of six, including a man named Agent Browning, selected for his knowledge of Russian dialects, were sent to investigate at Provisional Site 3034. Here, the team uncovered partially burned records and logbooks, all kept in Russian, along with evidence that the site had been evacuated shortly before their arrival. Carved into a desk, also in Russian, were two phrases, don't let her finish, and tell her all is well. On the team's second day at the site, an automated alarm sounded at 7.30 a.m., alerting them to the incoming SCP-3034 broadcast. Following the instructions on the desk, Agent Browning was able to stop the broadcast, telling the young Russian girl that all was well. A tape was partially recovered by the team from the site and translated from Russian. The GRUP members that had previously inhabited the station had interrogated one of their own, a man named Sergei whom they accused of stealing state property. She's not state property, he replied. She has a name. While well, his GRUP yeah. superior accused Sergei of planning to defect to the United States, allegedly in exchange for money and asylum, Sergei denied any collusion with America. He claimed that the GRUP at Provisional Site 3034 were meddling with powers they could not possibly hope to understand. His superior, a man named Vaslov, dismissed this, claiming their work to be no different to the United States experimentation with atomic weapons at the time. One does not make deals with atom bombs, Sergei argued. One certainly does not sacrifice little girls to them. Shortly after this, a struggle broke out, with Sergei having to be restrained while urging Vaslov to cease any and all interference with it. The man spoke of terrible nightmares that he'd had, voices screaming in the darkness. That's what he wants, Vaslov. That's what it is. You cannot make a deal with this thing. We have finally contained it, and now you want to offer it. The tape's audio ends shortly after this point with no clear answer as to what Sergei was referring to, or what offer these Russian operatives had made to it. Ever since the discovery of SCP-3034, members of the SCP Foundation have worked tirelessly to understand the purpose of these countdowns, as well as determine their origin. By September 2012, Dr. Shulkill was reaching the end of his tether with the investigation into the SCP-3034 broadcast. Over almost half a century, the Foundation had made well over 600 recordings of the Russian girls' countdowns, but still hadn't determined any noteworthy information. They were prohibited from contacting the girl via the same radio frequency, only permitted to use the phrase that stopped her countdowns. Running out of options, Shulkill contacted his colleague, Dr. Emerson, asking for an in-depth vocal analysis of the various recordings of SCP-3034. I'm sorry about that, but it's again, sorry. Um. Four. Even if they could narrow down where the broadcast was coming from, maybe by determining the girl's geographical location from her dialect, then that would be at least some slight progress into understanding SCP-3034. While unable to discover the girl's location, Dr. Emerson's analysis did yield some interesting findings. Emerson learned that these countdowns were not pre-recorded, 
The variations in the Russian girl's voice, her tone, her pitch, all seem to indicate that every instance of the broadcast was unique. Rather than use the same recording, this girl had been counting okay. down over and over hundreds of times wow, yeah, for almost really 50 years. But there was more. Shulkill and Emerson then examined the distortion, the sounds interfering with the audio of the Russian girl's countdowns. What had initially seemed like garbled static seemed to actually be additional voices. And much like the girl's voice, these distorted voices were unique, different, in every broadcast. However, Shulkill and Emerson were unable to accurately determine what these voices were saying. Given that the girls' countdowns were always cut short by the use of the phrase, all is well, the doctors did not have long enough samples of the audio to analyze the other distorted voices. With permission from the Foundation, the next five occurrences of the SCP-3034 broadcast were allowed to carry on for longer, giving the two doctors enough audio to determine exactly what the distorted voices were, and the results were extremely troubling. They were screams. Thousands upon thousands of children's voices endlessly screaming. Both Dr. Emerson and Dr. Shulkill agreed that it would be best to continue responding to SCP-3034 with the correct phrase, and refuse to analyze the distorted screaming audio any further. Mm -hmm. Three years later, while stationed at Provisional Site 3034, a Foundation researcher named Dr. Uriel Willis decided to take matters into her own hands. She conducted an experiment that had not been sanctioned by the Foundation, and attempted to make contact with the Russian girl giving the countdowns. Hearing Dr. Willis's voice, the girl stopped her countdown. After five long, painfully silent seconds, a new broadcast was heard. A piercing, high-pitched screech that caused extreme pain and dizziness to all the staff working on site. Unable to bear the disorienting sound, Dr. Willis told the girl all is well and caused the noise to stop. The following day, SCP researchers noted that there had been a significant increase in cases of missing children all around the world. A majority of these disappearances happened at the same time the screech had been broadcast, and remain unsolved to this day. Dr. Willis faced disciplinary action from the SCP Foundation, and any further testing of SCP-3034 and attempts to communicate with the Russian girl were prohibited. Only one distinct change has been noted in the SCP-3034 broadcast since this incident. Almost a month later, the countdown was detected and the correct phrase given. But researchers noted that, instead of starting her countdown from 200, this time the Russian girl began counting down from 199. Nobody knows what will happen if the Russian girl's countdown is allowed to reach zero. Personnel working at Provisional Site 3034 are told to always offer her the necessary phrase before this point in the countdown. Attempting to interfere with the broadcast by contacting this girl directly not only resulted in intense pain for SCP staff, but also seems to have caused an unconfirmed number of child disappearances around the globe, as well as reducing the countdown starting number from 200 to 199. After a long night on the road, you finally find the right turn, sending you in the right direction. As you drive through the night, you keep telling yourself one thing, one small phrase over and over again. You hope the words will eventually give you comfort, but deep down you start to realize just how hollow they are. That it's just a lie we tell ourselves so we don't have to face the inevitable. But still, what choice do you have but to keep telling yourself that all is well? Now check out SCP-3001 Red Reality and SCP-4511 Swine God for more nightmares from the world of the SCP Foundation. Thanks for watching guys, see you later!